Bernie Marks. <clears throat> Get set. Hi, I'm Sasha Pearl Raver here with Brendan Walsh and Justine Shiraki, and this is the Indie Angle. interview with Shauna Festi, the writer-director of Country Strong, and we have a tip from Michelle Gondry, the director of The Green Hornet and other amazing films like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. We're also going to be talking about new films coming to a theater near you, of course, The Golden Globes, but first up, it's time for Sundance. Yes, the annual celebration of independent cinema commences January 20th in Park City. As per usual, there are a number of anticipated premieres, but I think it's worthwhile to note some of the distribution issues that Sundance has had recently. Oddly, there have been record-breaking ticket sales over the past two years, yet the films are not exactly selling outside of the festival. Um, not a lot of them are getting distribution. Most of the big films are being sold before they even get to the festival, and the ones that are sold at the festival are making no money at the box office. So this raises questions, what's going on? Is it the studio, the audience, the distributors? What do you guys think? I think, I think the festival has made a conscious effort over the last couple of years, especially last year, to select movies to show that are going to be especially challenging and difficult to watch or sit through and these are the kind of things that are not attractive to distributors. They're not going to want to purchase these things because they're so out there and far from the Hollywood sensibility that they want to invest in. See, but I find that really hard to believe because all of the films at Sundance have big names attached to them, it, whether it's a director or a star. And the thing is, is I am so sick and tired of somebody saying that a film is good because it's hard to watch. Why can't a film be great because it's really, really funny or very well written? I don't understand why independent cinema always has to be something that's a taxing experience. Why can't it just be about doing something outside of the norm, not something that's going to make me want to jump off a bridge? Right, like why can't an independent film also have commercial appeal? Like what is the big deal? Well, and the thing that is a little bit interesting about that though is one of my favorite films that came out of Sundance a few years ago was 500 Days of Summer, which was very commercial. It was a great right. romantic comedy that was sort of outside of the vein of what we've seen, but a little When Harry Met Sally-ish, right. and that tanked at the box office. I think one of the best films that came out of Sundance last year, Animal Kingdom, which I know you love, right? Because it's fantastic, but it's an awesome. extremely difficult thing to watch because it just boils this tension so slowly that by the end of it, you've just been suffering through all of this drama and it really takes a toll on you to, to watch, but it, that doesn't make it any less of a great film. By the way, Another thing I want to talk about, now that we're on the subject of Sundance, is uh, Kevin Smith's new film, Red State. Now, love him or hate him, Kevin Smith's best movies come from when he takes a chance. He's putting himself on the line in some way or another. Clerks was made entirely on credit card debt. Dogma was made knowing that he was going to piss off the religious, uh, uh, the Catholic League. Do you really think Dogma is one of Kevin Smith's best films? I do. <laughs> really? I do. That's okay, I think Chasing Amy is. Continue. <laughs> okay, no, also a great movie. Love that movie. Um, uh, but again, he put he, he took a great risk by putting himself, his own personal story, on the line in a way that he hadn't in any of the others. Um, but he spent the last few films really inside his comfort zone. These, these cheeky, raunchy comedies that are starring all of his buddies, uh, especially Zach and Miri, they've got studio actors and studio oh. funding. Like, they, <laughs> it's kind of... It's, it's, <laughs> Cop out? Right. Oh. Well, he didn't write that. So, anyway. Um, let's take a look at the trailer for Red State. I see the promise of all forgiveness to set you free. I see the face of Jesus on my way this night. And my Savior is glad to comfort me. I fear God. You better believe I fear God. Now, I think this looks great. It does not look like a Kevin Smith movie. First of all, the camera is off the goddamn tripod. <laughs> There's movement. It might be shaky handheld, but he's trying something new. 
Also, the cast is stacked with real actors, not just his buddies. You've got Melissa Leo, you've got Michael Parks, the sheriff from Kill Bill and from Dusk Till Dawn. And then you've got the always fantastic John, John Goodman. Goodman. I can't wait to see what these guys do with some verbose Kevin Smith dialogue. Uh, but let's talk about John Goodman for a minute. Let's talk about John Goodman. Actually, what we're going to be doing is we're introducing a new segment here. It's called The Watch List. And every week we're going to talk about somebody who's doing exceptional work, whether it's an actor, a director, a writer. And this week, it's all about John Goodman. Red State, it's an exciting thing, but more than anything, John Goodman has been in some of the best Coen Brother movies, in my opinion, that they've ever done. Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, Hello, The Big Lebowski, and my personal favorite, Raising Arizona. Raising Arizona. Barton Fink. I know, but come on. No. I will on show the you the life of no! the mind! <laughs> and John Goodman on Treme, HBO such a phenomenal series. It comes back. The whisper is that it'll be April 24th, 2011, although it might be a little bit later in the spring season. But the work that John Goodman does, whether it's with Roseanne Barr or with the Coen brothers, is always exceptional. Speaking of the Coen brothers, we need to talk about some Golden Globe snubs. <laughs> I am still reeling over the fact that True Grit, which in my opinion is one of the best comedies to come out in the last decade, was completely ignored. And The Tourist is yeah. up for major nominations. And Johnny Depp, I love Johnny Depp, but Alice in Wonderland and Where the Hell is Lost on the TV nominations. <laughs> my beloved Lost, which wrapped up its finale in May, Totally ignored. Terry O'Quinn, nowhere to be found. Matthew Fox, nowhere to be found. The Hollywood Foreign Press is a weird, weird bunch, but I gotta tell you, this year at the Golden Globes, the snubs are blaring. If Christopher Nolan decided to put the Riddler in the new Batman, which he won't, I think Michael Emerson would be the best choice for that character. <laughs> we have to make a phone call because that's amazing. <laughs> There was a number of like really, really weird, there's a lot of weird sort of, the foreign press just, I don't understand. I think they just want bold print names to Absolutely. get to the They just Absolutely. want to get the pictures of the celebrities and their wives and these their people, fabulous outfits. They'll do anything to get Johnny Depp and Angela and all these people on a red carpet. I do Absolutely. have to say though, it is my favorite award ceremony because everybody gets ragingly drunk <laughs> and that is fun to watch. Speaking of stuff that's fun to watch, Brennan, what's the video of the week? <laughs> Let's take a look at the video of the week. It is another Sundance film. It is called Troll Hunter. It is a Norwegian horror action monster movie. It really looks like a good time. Let's check out the trailer. excited for this movie. I think it looks like a lot of fun. I think it looks like one of those uh, things where it has like three different kinds of movies inside of it. The way District 9 did. It starts off as a documentary and then becomes a horror and then all of a sudden it's an action comedy. I think that's going to be really exciting. I don't know. I feel like it's sort of this weird hybrid of Cloverfield and the Blair Witch Project, but I, maybe it's the Norwegian sense of humor that I'm just not getting. I know that you've been obsessed with this movie for a while. I would definitely give it the benefit of the doubt, but there's something about it where I don't know if it's supposed to be stupid or funny, 
and I can't really decide which one I think it is. Right, they need to commit to something. I understand you appreciating they're trying to mix like 15 different movie styles into one, but it's just a mess. I feel like you gotta pick one angle and go with it. I think it's gonna have a stronger sense of fun than Blair Witch or Cloverfield did, and I think that's what's gonna make it worthwhile. Wh which would you rather it be, dark and serious or fun and exciting? There's no way that a 40-foot troll <laughs> is gonna get a dark and serious <laughs> response from people. <laughs> that's just not gonna happen. Okay. All well, right, well, we'll see how it turns out. Speaking of mixing genres and things being maybe dark and serious or really, really funny. It was just announced that Kiefer Sutherland is doing a new series, but he's not doing it on television. He's doing it on Hulu. It's called The Confession. It will be broken up into 10 episodes that are all five to seven minutes long, and it's about a hitman who begins each episode by confessing his sins to a priest, and then the story is told supposedly in wild action sequences in flashbacks. Really? Yeah. I had no idea about that. <laughs> that actually sounds kind of tight. Really? On Hulu? <laughs> on I mean, Hulu. Like, what's he going to like... I just can't see that. Like, I, like <laughs> what? Well, I think it's interesting that they're legitimizing web series. I mean, Funny or Die Does is it kind though? of... Well, you've got an A-list actor in it. Hulu has already begun charging premiums for certain content. This is practically a step to making them their own internet network. This could be the start of a revolution. It could this be. Could be it's, big it's for the internet. Cooper's <laughs> alone is going to change I, it all, people. But like, mm -hmm. I don't know. I like the idea of TV being on TV. I don't want TV on my computer. And I just don't know what TV actors thrill to jump to the internet. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I don't... The unemployed ones. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but like, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland's not that pathetic these days, is he? He's is just it, as unemployed bad? as every other non-working actor in Hollywood. He could live off of that Lost Boys money yeah. for a long time. <laughs> He'll be fine. Yeah.